When I first started learning how to make games, I kind of ignored the sound design and sound effects in my game and would just add them in without really thinking about them. And, and a lot of the times it resulted in jarring games that had kind of really, really blown out sound effects and just it kind of would ruin the game. But over the years, I've gotten better at sound design, especially with Hex God, I've realized that you can add sound effects to nearly anything and it basically makes the game better. But you have to do it carefully because too many sound effects are too loud can also have the negative impact. Kind of like how screen shake, like too much screen shake can kind of make it too jarring. I feel like sound design is the same way where you need to add it in to have good feeling and good sound effects and like make this intro sound really good in the game where it kind of pans in like that and that crescendo happens. And one of the biggest challenges I've faced with sound design is making sure that the sound doesn't spike. And what I mean by spiking is when you have a bunch of different scenes in your game. For example, in my first game, Chess Survivors, I have all these little XP sound effects which are gonna get sucked up by the player and then they all play a little bit of a sound effect. I can play it here. You can hear it happens there. But if I grab this magnet, suck it all up at once, and so each one of these XP, which there's hundreds on the screen, are gonna play that sound effect and kind of blow out the top end. We'll, we'll do that really quickly here. Did you hear that? It kind of went And that sort of effect is surely not intentional. In my head, when the sound effect sounds one way and then all of a sudden in a pretty common use case, like using that magnet, it can kind of blow that top and it's gonna pull the player out of the fun. It's gonna make the game feel a little bit more unpolished. Now, Godot does give you some audio effects you can manage. And in Chess Survivors, what you just heard was where I was playing with a compressor and a limiter to reduce that effect, but it still distorts it and makes it sound funny. So today I wanted to talk about my audio manager class, which the genesis of this is to solve that problem where if I have a sound that I want to play from a bunch of different copies of one scene I don't want them to spike up and all play their sound effects at once so the main thing it's doing is allowing me to have a limit keep track of that limit and then when the audio stops playing we decrement that limit back down kind of opening up space to play a copy of that audio file from somewhere else. So let's walk through this code together so you can understand how I came to this result and maybe use something similar in your project. There is a GitHub link below to this code. So the main thing that this project is, is this is an auto load scene, which you can do. You can auto load both scripts and scenes. So I have my audio manager scene, which is a 2D scene, which is gonna be really helpful for if I wanna create spatial 2D audio, or if I wanna do kind of global audio. And I have two methods for that. I have my main two methods in here are gonna be create 2D audio at location or create audio. And the only difference between those two is I'm passing in a global position. So I'll focus on the 2D audio because I think that's more interesting. And I think I use this one a majority of the time. So when I call this method from anywhere in my project, I say audio manager .create 2D audio at location, passing in a global position, and then passing in a sound effect setting enum for the sound effect type. Uh, I can click in here and you can see I've defined and named these very well so I know what the sound effect is. So for example, this is on tile place. So in a tile place, this is the sound effect that I play. So the sound effect setting is simply gonna be the thing that holds a reference to how what the limit should be, the type, the sound effect file that's actually gonna be playing, the volume, a pitch scale, so if I wanna have it pitched up or down, and then even a pitch randomness. And then there's a few methods inside the sound effect setting for changing the audio count, so increasing that count one, checking to see do we have an open limit based off of how many audio instances of the sound effect are playing, can we play anymore and then finally there's a connected signal to decrement the audio count back down then i define the sound effect settings on an export variable in here this export variable is sound effect settings it is an array of typed sound effect settings which gives me then in the editor i can go in here and see this uh this custom resource this custom resource here I can see the sound effect settings because these are export variables and ranges. When I go into the audio manager and open one of these up, I can see here's the limit. I can say it is an int so that I get to set the int correctly. I can pick the enum from this list. I can then slot in the sound effect type. So this is that sound effect playing. I can change the volume, the pitch scale, and the pitch randomness. I want to be a game developer who makes YouTube videos and not a YouTuber who makes games. And because of that, I'm trying not to take sponsorships on this channel so that I can focus on just making the type of content that I want to see and that I think you'll find valuable. I hope my genuine approach to sharing stuff honestly comes through. If you want to support this channel any further, go check out Hexagon and make sure to wishlist it over on Steam. I think this is a really good game right now, but with your help and your feedback, I can turn this into an amazing and a great game. I appreciate the support. Let's dive right back in. Back into the audio manager. 
what we're going to do very quickly here is make sure that we have defined a type. So if I pass in a type for the create 2D audio at location, I make sure we even have a type. Otherwise, if we don't have a type defined, I have to throw an error saying, hey, dummy, you haven't defined this yet. Go ahead and do it. I push an error because when I run my project, it'll fail then and I can see it fail loudly and down my debug panel. Know that I haven't set it up correctly since there is some configuration needed for any given sound effect. Then I grab that out, uh, defining it as a sound effect type just so I can reference its variables and have that nice autocomplete. And then I check to see if that sound effect has an open limit. Again, this open limit is looking to see based off the limit I set over here, do we have any space? So let's say I have two instances of on tile placed. If I try to make a third instance, instance, we would yes, have open limit and would go down and create this audio. If it was the fourth time we came through here, so four tiles got placed all at once, the fourth one would basically get suppressed and not get played, preventing me from really spiking up. And that is that is the, the true benefit for me. From there, we go ahead and create an audio stream 2D node. We add it as a child of ourself, which is why the audio manager for me is a node 2D. So then when I go ahead and change the position of that to the location passed in or this global position passed in, it does then go and map to the world correctly so that spatial audio uh, makes sense. From there, we're setting the stream based off the sound effects audio file, the volume, the pitch scale. I'm changing the randomness if it has a randomness using my RNG. And then finally, the really important part here is we have two different audio on finish connections. So specifically speaking, this is a signal that's built into the audio stream 2D player. You can control click those instances to see them. If we scroll down to the signals, we have finished and it says emitted when an audio stops playing. So we connect that then to the um, sound effect setting dot audio finished, which again, if we click into that, we can see that this simply decrements the audio count negative one. So whenever that audio is done playing that one instance of it, we then basically free up that limit to have one more space available. And finally, we also connect this to a cue free signal. So when that audio is done, it's going to um, decrement down the sound effect setting. And then we're gonna basically say, hey, when you're done, go ahead and, and clean yourself up just so we don't have, um, I think when I first implemented this, I didn't have this cue free method. And so whenever an audio instance would play, basically I had a memory leak where we just start keeping more and more audio happening in the game. So uh, that was a recent addition for Hex God here was to to do that. And finally, we go ahead and play it. And then when it plays, once it finished, we, we, we decrement down the limit and we go through and clean itself up. So if we went and looked at where I actually use this in the project, we can grab the method control shift F to find it. And we'll go down to the tile manager class and see how it looks when we actually want to call it. So it says audio manager, which is what I've named it in the auto, auto load settings or the global settings. Uh, dot create 2d audio at location placing in the global audio the global position from the tile and then saying sound effect settings dot sound effect type which is the name of the enum passing in the on tile placed this will then play that sound effect setting again if it has available limits if you want to go ahead and implement this yourself the three things you need to do are make sure that you go and define your own enums for these sound effect types don't use mine use something descriptive good long names are going to help you in the long run remember what you're doing and the other thing is make sure you go up into project settings global and then find the scene for audio manager and make sure you load that and name that something that you enjoy so you can reference it easily in your brain when you go through you don't have to name it audio manager if you like audio handler or sound effect manager or whatever you want to call it make sure it makes sense in your head and the very final thing is you're gonna to have to get some sound effects so you need the files to be able to actually be placed into your audio file here so you can put the sound effect into the sound effect setting and be able to be played. I would recommend checking out a site called Zapsplat. I'm not sponsored by them, but they have a great free uh, licensing agreement that you can use in your games. I'm not a lawyer, read through the licensing yourself. That's my disclaimer, but they have so many sound effect settings that I've never, it, it, it sometimes just takes me a long time to find it, but I've never not found a sound effect that I needed, or maybe sometimes I'll edit it in odd audacity and either trim it down or, or adjust it or, or add some of these sound effect settings together. And the only issue with a free account is that you get limited per hour. I think it's like five downloads per hour. But if you slowly add in sound effects into your game and over time you're slowly increasing it, eventually I guarantee you will have a game that sounds really good. My last quick piece of advice is to make your sound effects a bit quieter and then allow the player to have a slider because there's nothing worse than opening a game and having it be too loud. Then you can also use contrast to have certain moments like playing uh, an evil hex here that can have this evil bum 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 effect. I've been Aramis. Let me know if you have any comments below. Go check out Hexagon and Wishlist over on Steam. You're better at this than you think you are. 
are. Have a good day. See you next time. Bye-bye.